or something just ripping stuff off of my line down there. I mean, ripping stuff. Whatever it is, whenever he does hit, he hits hard. All right, big fella. All right, I got you. Yep, I got you this time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a huge fish. <laughs> What is good? What is good, all my real ones? Welcome back to another episode of It Gets Real. It's your boy, B, the Flossy Fisherman. And today, we back in Half Moon Bay, California. Yes, sir, at Pillar Point Harbor. Today, I'm about to do some poke polling again. This time, I decided to go the other route. I'm here on the side of uh, Maverick Beach right there. For all my surfers out there, y'all should be, uh, familiar with Maverick Beach but um yeah man I chose this side you know it's a little bit further off but uh I'll be fishing the harbor or poke polling right there along the harbor on the inside it's on the other side of the jetty man as you can see these waves are real rough so I wouldn't be poke polling nowhere around that with the waves crashing on the rocks and stuff that could be a dangerous situation as they're giving warning signs so yeah we ain't doing none of that today but we're gonna play it safe on the inside of the harbor and um po po for some rockfish or uh, possibly my personal best monkey face eel so i'll be using some squid and um getting to it so y'all keep it locked and see if your boy can't Hook up on something. Woke up in the morning around six o'clock. Hop up in the whip and hit the bank shot. Gotta make it quick, no time to waste. But I gotta stock up on worms, cook some waste. So here we have a chart of what you can't take, which is all abalone species, sea stars, chitin species, barnacles, gooseneck barnacles, and sea slugs. But what you are allowed to take is five moon snails a day, 35 limpets, 35 turban snails, 35 red and purple urchins, rock crabs is 35, the minimum of four inches, and shore crab. It's interesting because I never thought you could take those, but learn something new every day. Warning, do not eat the mussels. From May 1st to October 31st. Yeesh. Pull up to the lake trying to find a spot. This brain said they biting by the duck. If you ever been fishing, then you know the deal. Sit back, relax, cause man, it gets real. All right, it's low tide. We're gonna try to access some of these holes over here. Got some people already pole poking. A nice little rock crab right there. So these are definitely the spots that we're looking for. Holes like that right there. But of course, I'm not gonna search it without any bait. I'm gonna handle that. But I do would like to give a shout out to Spencer from uh, Marley Family Seaweed. Yeah, he gifted me this poke pole. So this is a 13 foot telescopic crappie pole that you can get from Bass Pro or Walmart. I'm just gonna be using some squid for bait today. Using a size one octopus hook. Whoa, water's coming up. All 
nothing there, but we're gonna move down. And these are the kind of holes that might be holding something good. Kind of far back there, deep back there. Still haven't hit bottom. If the pole starts rattling and shaking, you know, it means I'm on to something, but none of that yet. Deep, but nothing in there. Yeah, this is where the jetty life gets tricky. All these rocks. You don't know what's stable and what's not. Yeah, the further down the jetty you go, you know, the higher your chances is catching the bigger eels because the further out you go the deeper the water is get down here and try some of these other rocks haven't found the sweet spot yet but that's what poke pulling is about keep poking around till you find that sweet spot Oh, all the strike. There's something down there in that hole. Oh, nice bite. Oh, oh. Is he on? Whatever it is, it's hitting it pretty hard. something. I don't know if I still got bait. Do I still have bait? No, I do not have bait. That would explain why I stopped getting bit. But there's something down there. And once again, I got stripped. Whatever it is down there, he's probably full. He ate all my all my bait so far. Try another hole. Woo! There's something under this rock. Okay. Yeah, we on. Woo! There's something big too. It's something big, boy. Woo! Big old prickle back, yo. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Yeah, definitely PB. And he's pooping some kelp. So the interesting thing about these uh, prickle back monkey face eels is they're not really eels. They are um, rockfish. They're a species of rockfish. But since they're long and slender, and resemble eels, they call them monkey face eels. So, and get this guy unhooked and uh, yeah, look at the designs. You got like tiger stripes on them almost. It's crazy. Some kind of big cat stripes. Fun fact about these guys, as you see that it's kelp and seaweed and things that these guys eat. They're not, they really don't eat squid, but it's a reaction strike. You know, they really do just eat vegetation. And another thing about poke pollen and, uh, you know, when you find these holes is there could be more than one fish in a certain hole. So we're going to go back again. Now, what would be really cool is if I could find a cabazon out here. That's still one species fish species on my list that I have yet to catch is a cabazon or I mean a kelp greenling I want to keep her kelp greenling so yeah those are um, two fish on my list that I would like to catch so no more luck in this hole let's do it moving I can't say so far I'm digging this uh, style of 
poke pulling with the hanger and just a hook and a swivel because even though you do get snagged the hook gets snagged on the rock sometimes uh still not losing much tackle if any so I, I think this will be my preferred way of poke pulling from now on yeah nothing in there Whew. paying this first hole another visit again there's something just ripping stuff off of my line down there I mean ripping stuff whatever it is whenever he does hit he hits hard see striking hitting I took my bait that time yep Ooh, that thing down there whatever he is I want him I want him all right, big fella. All right, I got you. Yep, I got you this time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Woo! Oh, yeah. This is bigger than the last one. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Holy moly. Look at this guy here. Now that is my PB. Monkey face eel. Good Lord. I knew it. I knew there was something big in there. I just knew it. Wow. He just kept eating and eating until I finally got him. This is a real deep hole. He's biting all right. Come on, guy. Probably took my bait again. Again? <laughs> Wouldn't doubt it. Let's see. Yep. Get this bait stealer down here. Biting it. And stay on though. Yo. Rockfish, bruh. Yee. There we go. That's what I've been waiting for, man. Catch me a good rockfish. Yeah, buddy. Alright. Got two fish out of that hole. Well, high tide is here. I don't know if y'all can see, but this is a, uh, all these rocks were visible before. Now they're not, but all that over there is what I have to worry about. Very, very tragic situation. I was trying to bleed out the eel, that big one, the PB, the giant one. I was actually trying to measure them as well. And, uh, I thought he bled out, but he had some more kick to him and um, fell back off into the water, man. So, yeah, that's the one thing about these jetties, man, is, uh, you know, people lose things and, yeah, man, gotta be careful on these jetties, but, yeah, it's tragic. I wanted to at least get the, uh, you know, I was going to try them out for my fuego or say no, but um, hey, at least we still got one and one rockfish. Fishing on these jetties, man, is always a sketchy thing, you know. Like I said before, I mean, you drop your wallet, keys, phone in these rocks, you're not getting it back. So, got to be very cautious. And um, I mean, every single move is a calculated step on these jetties but when this tide is up and it's crashing against the rocks i mean all these rocks are slippery so another thing is knowing when to leave when you're fishing on the jetty because uh your way back could be quite difficult these tides could 
come swoop you up. One of these big waves crash, you slip on a rock, lose your footing, and then, you know, it's, it's almost a wrap from there, man. So, so all my peoples out there that fish the jetties, man, I mean, proceed with caution, for real, for real. I had thought that those people down there I thought they left before me but uh they're right in the midst of everything I mean I'm not all the way in the clear but yeah they got some pretty wet terrain to walk through and dudes wearing flip-flops not ideal yeah these waves are kicking up as high tide is coming in and this is the Mavericks Beach. That's some crazy water. But it is nowhere near to what it can get out here. These waves could get huge. Those folks are still on the jetty, man. I'm, I'm just hoping they make it back safe. Because walking on those rocks with these waves crashing. Yeah, that's definitely not the business. But once again, shout out to Spencer for gifting me that poke pole. Can't wait for you to see this video and see the monkey face eel I caught. You know, we skunked that day, but hey, man, my ratio ain't messed up today. You know what I mean? Seen a whole bunch of nori today. Didn't know what it looked like until then. Now that is what I believe is nori right there. The darker seaweed. But you got to check your water conditions um, anywhere you do decide to harvest. I mean, none of the seaweed is toxic or anything like that. But the water you harvesting from, you know, you might want to just check the levels of everything and make sure it's clean. It's like a mixture of sea lettuce and nori. Or it's either just dried out nori and it turned a lot lighter. Right on, they made it back. So I could leave with a guilt-free conscience. All right, y'all. As promised, I said I was going to do my fuego or say no. So I have some of the monkey face eel right here. Got some fillets. You know what I'm going to use. I got my Cajun, Louisiana fish fry mix. Well, you know, monkey face eels aren't the prettiest things to look at, but we gonna see if they taste good. Just chop it up in the fish fry, like so. And like I was saying, uh, monkey face eels are not actually eels. They are a part of the rockfish family. So since I caught a rockfish, I'm also going to um, fry some of this up too and uh, see a simple comparison if I could tell you if they taste the same or if there's a major difference. Most of y'all already know how I feel about rockfish. It's kind of one of the favorites. Top five out of uh, the fish I like. So I'm going to use a little extra earth virgin olive oil. So threw a little bit of butter in there. Had to put that butter in there, you know. Shout out to Fisherman's Life. So we got all of the monkey face eel right here. And then we have some of the rockfish right there. Nice, crispy, golden. Yeah, over some jasmine rice. Now the taste test will begin. Kinda has a rockfish flavor. Man, if I had to give this a scale of one to five, I'd say five. Monkey face eel is fuego. 
this is fire. Oh my goodness. Yeah, who knew something that ugly could taste that good? Well, here is some of the rockfish. We already know rockfish is fuego. But there is a difference in the consistency of the uh, fish. Now the rockfish, it breaks apart a lot easier. It's, uh, you know, less firm, more flaky, shall I say. Kind of like melts in your mouth. But the eel, it's a little more dense, but a little bit more firm, firm meat. Wow, that is up there. That is up there, I have to say. I'm shocked, surprised, it's delicious. Delicious. Monkey face heel. Fuego. All right, man. I got my boy Omar, yeah, man. First time. Y'all might uh, remember him from um, catching all the lightning trouts that one episode yeah, of Mick sure Alpine. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to have him dig in on some of this uh, monkey face heel. You got to let me know is it Fuego or say no? Man. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. Fuego. Oh. Hold on. We gotta do the hot sauce one time. Just a little bit. Bro. Fuego. For the show, for sure. <laughs> Fire. Get into that eel, see what that's all about. Yeah, you know man. Saying? All you gotta do is just let them know is it fuego or say no. You Let's know see what I mean? If the eel is eel. You know what I'm saying? I'm a dog Kenzie with the taste test, man. That's three taste buds on y'all. I can't even lie, man. It's packing a lot of flavor, bro. It's like. Look, I'm down in New Orleans, noodling, pulled it straight out. This is good right here, B. It been real. For sure, for sure. Yo, this mother. Hope y'all enjoyed this segment. Um, definitely, po poking is fun. Um, man, like hooking up on them eagles when they strike out of them holes. That's some different type of fishing man um but it, it's dope urge y'all to go out there give it a try uh, low tides if y'all can find tide pools and stuff like that um check it out strongly encourage uh you guys get your hands on some monkey face eels because they are good eating i'm here to set the record straight man yeah those little ugly slimy things uh their fuego. <laughs> but to the next fuego or say no, man, y'all be cool, y'all be blessed. Peace. I believe I found my culprit. That crab was stealing all my bait.